This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So I want to talk to you today about how to capture images of your creation in vPython. Let's suppose you've got, you know, some earth-shattering physics simulation that you had developed and you need to get some images out of it. Um, if you run a code, uh, here I'm just going to create a ball over to the right. Um, so I created over here, the ball uh, you know, is over here to the right, it's got a radius of one by default. Um, there's a link up here called Screenshot, and that is a useful button, but it does not take a screenshot that you can use later. Let me explain what that means. When you click on this, if you look at the, the, the title text here, change the thumbnail image for this program to its current display. So if I click that, I don't get an image file, right? Uh, students get confused by this sometimes when I tell them to take a screenshot. They, they click on this and then they don't get anything because what that does is changes the thumbnail. So if I go over to my folder, vPython for beginners here, and I go down to this code, capture screen, you notice it's got that thumbnail here. That's how you can set the thumbnail here so that you can more easily recognize what program it is or if you're sharing your folder with someone, uh, they can more easily see, you know, what the what the thing is that, that they're getting into, right? So, that it, so this image now matches that image. If I later change the code, like let's say I change this to a red sphere, so we'll say color equals color dot red. Right, I can rerun it, click screenshot again, and then when I come over here, I can refresh this page, and now my thumbnail for capture screen has a red sphere instead of a white sphere. So that is what that does. That is your set thumbnail button. How do you actually get a an image from there? Well, you can use your, your regular screenshot tool. You, know, you can press alt print screen. But that's kind of difficult to do in the middle of an animation, or maybe you, you want it to take a, a picture at a particular moment. There is a built-in function that will do that for you. And it's this thing called scene.capture. What you do with scene.capture is provide the name of a file you want it to save to. So I can save this as, uh, let's say, red ball. And now when I run this, it's going to execute, it's going to read through the code like usual. It's going to execute this part where it'll render the, the red sphere. It'll set these variables that we're not doing with anything with just yet. And then it's going to execute this function where it's going to prompt for me to save a file called red ball. Watch this. I'm going to press control two again. So we're going to run the code now. It rendered my red sphere there. And here I've got my file redball.png. So it defaults to a PNG. Uh, which is, in my experience, uh, the, the, the better of the of many uh, uh, image file formats to work with, um, and so it, it's got your it's got this red ball file here. I can rename it if I want to, but basically I'm providing the default file name there. So I can click on save there, and I will have an image of whatever's going on in vPython. So when I click on this to open it. It comes up here in my image editor, and now I can, you know, I can do stuff on here. I can, I can edit this like an image, you know, and I can say things, you know, like, like the, oh, I need a color other than uh, black, don't I? Uh, I can say things like the ball moved this way, or here is the ball, you know. And so if you're using vPython for an assignment, this is an easy way to get, uh, to, to, to if you're using vPython for an assignment, this is an easy way to extract an image for your homework or your lab report or whatever. Uh, you know, then once you've got an image file of it, you can mark it up, you know, however you want. You can put it into Word, you can add stuff to it, um, and you can go from there. It's pretty cool. Another trick you can use for this, let's suppose we were doing an animation here, right? So here I've got an animation that's going, I'm going to comment that out because I don't want it to do that. Yet. I don't want to do this yet either. Here I've got an animation that's going to loop around for uh, for the time less than the maximum time of one. And we're going to move the ball around in a circle, right? So these are the coordinates for a circle, cosine and sine for X and Y. And so when I run this, it's going to give me this animation. Uh, that was a bit fast, Brian. Let's, uh, let's put that down to like rate of five, maybe. We'll do control two. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, but anyway, so I get this animation out. Let's suppose I want to share that, right? Well, sharing an animation, uh, there's a few ways you can do that. You can use your favorite screen capture software. There are lots of uh, screen capture softwares that will 
uh, export an animated GIF for uh, for the thing that you capture, so you can get an animated GIF like that. Or if you need to get a still shot of each frame, you can put this call for scene.capture into the loop. So here I've got scene.capture, and then the trick is gonna be giving them a different file name, right? Because like when I called scene.capture up here, I said red ball. If I copy and paste that in here, it's gonna be red ball, red ball, red ball, red ball, red ball, over and over again, right? And Windows doesn't like it when you name things two different files the same name, right? But what you can do is make this uh, file name variable, right? So like I can have uh, ball plus the time value, and then I can convert the timestamp into a string. So what this str function does, it takes the number that's stored inside t, converts it to a string or, or, or series of characters, and then it's gonna add that string to ball to the ball string here, and that way I'll get a different file name each time. So watch what happens when I press Control 2 now. It's gonna start my animation. So there it moves along, moves along, and each frame I'm going to get a prompt for uh, for one of these, uh, for, for each of these files. So I have to save that file, and then I'll get a prompt to save the next file. You notice I went from ball zero to ball 0 0.1, and then I get a ball 0 0.2, and then I get a ball 0 0.3, and uh, I got some garbage onto the time value there. Hopefully that goes away the next time. And ball 0 0.4, good, it got rid of the garbage there ball 0 0.5 and you can get an idea that this is going to be a bit tedious so this is a thing you can do it's a thing you need to be prepared to do right so I would not have the Python exporting all these images um, if there's if it's possible there's any mistakes in your code so make sure your animation is producing the results you want first before you do this because it's actually kind of difficult to close out the program at this point right because as long as this dialog box is open I can't get back there to the X button, right? Um, if I save and then X, will that work? Okay, that worked. No, 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 that did not work, actually. Um, if you wanted it to, say, uh, give you every, let's say, fifth frame, I suppose I wanted to do every fifth frame, what you can do is start a little counter called N. At the beginning of every frame, you can say N equals N plus one to increment that. And then you can say if n equals, let's say five, so let's say I wanna get every fifth one, I can reset n to zero and then do the screen capture. And now what'll happen, I'm only gonna get one every five animation frames. So instead of getting one at 0 0.1, I get one at 0 0.4, because I started at zero, so this is the fifth one. And then it's gonna continue along and I get one at 0 0.9, because that's five more from 0.4. And then I'm done, right? So that's another way you can work around this. If you don't want to get every single frame, if you just want to get, you know, every fifth frame or every hundredth frame or something, that's another way you can save yourself from having to click save a hundred times. Hi everyone, this is Brian from about two days after that video was recorded. I found out how to solve the problem of having to save all those files manually thanks to some back and forth with Bruce Sherwood, the developer of vPython. This is a problem that I created for myself in Chrome. If you go into settings here, uh, you can set the downloads to either all go to the same folder or for you to tell it which folder you want each time. So just search for uh, download here, down here, right here, where it says location and ask where to save each file before downloading. The problem is I had this turned on. When you have this turned on, it's gonna ask you where you wanna download each file to. I usually have that on because I rarely want them to all go to the same uh, you know, folder within the course of a day, anything I download. But for this case, we're gonna click here to turn it off and then you can specify which folder they go to. So for example, you can click on change here and you can add a new folder and tell it that you would like, uh, let's call this red ball animation. And then I can go into here click on select folder, and now when I run the code, press control two to run, the animation runs and you notice that the files just download, right? I don't have to worry about them, uh, about what folder they're going in anymore. I also get a little notice up here that this site downloaded multiple files automatically. This is just a little security feature. And now if I go into that folder, 
I can see my uh, red ball pictures there. So that's a way you can avoid having to click on save every time. Makes things go a lot faster. Uh, again, you probably want to check for yeah, for making sure that the code is producing what you want it to before you commit everything to the images. Uh, but yes, that will produce the most efficient uh, uh, results there in terms of getting screenshots of your animation. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.